You know, you've been lied to about your food for a very long time. You see this right here? This is a 450 milligram tablet. What if I were to tell you that this is actually zero milligrams? Of course, you're looking at it, but it really doesn't exist. Have you been lied to about your food for a long time? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman, and welcome to my channel where I review and debunk nutritional misinformation online. In this video, we're going to review, it's done by Dr. Eric Berg. I'm sure you know Dr. Berg. If you don't yet, you will. A massively popular influencer and chiropractor who was in clinical practice for a long time using a low carb and keto diet. And then did whiteboard videos of all of the mechanisms and became an internet phenomenon. So we're going to look at what he has to say about you being lied to and be sure to wait till the end to hear my final thoughts. I want to invite you to join my free webinar, Beyond Cholesterol, the two biggest risk factors for cardiovascular disease. If you're confused about cholesterol or feeling pressured to take medication to lower your cholesterol, this webinar is for you. I'll provide the facts you need to understand why cholesterol isn't the most important factor in assessing your risk for cardiovascular disease and what you should focus on instead to better reduce your risk. See the link in the description to sign up. What would you say? I'm crazy, right? Well, this is a loophole that manufactured companies use to hide ingredients in your food. And it's called the rounding rule. If something is less than 500 milligrams per serving size, they don't have to list it in the nutrition facts. Let me explain. Let's say a product has less than 500 milligrams of trans fats, okay, per serving size. Manufacturing companies can round down to zero and even say on the label that it has zero trans fats. The same thing with MSG. It's called the rounding down trick. Okay, and it blows my mind how they got away with getting that passed. Well, so really, is it being lied to, or is it that you ask a mathematician, if we have 0.49 and we only can have an integer, do we round it up to one or do we round it down to zero? And, and you know, if you ask a mathematician, most would say you round down to zero if you're at the 0.5. So on a, on a food label, it's in grams. And so he's leading with this 450 milligrams, so it's about half a gram. And what he's saying is that it's under half a gram, so the companies round down, not only for trans fats, but for carbohydrates, for sugars, for anything. So when you look at a product and it says zero, he's right, it could have up to 0.5 grams. And I, you know, I've seen this happen like with pickles. Pickles are pickled cucumbers, the typical pickle, and it might say zero carbs. And I explain, well, it can't be zero because it has a cucumber in it, unless it modified, I don't, it doesn't modify the, the carbs in the cucumber. But it's so low, the companies ask the, the mathematician, or maybe they're lying. Maybe they know that you would be less likely. No, I don't think so. I don't think they think you're looking at, I don't know how many people are looking at the labels now looking at total carbs and one gram or two gram and then choosing the ones and be careful about net carbs. We're talking about total carbs here, but you can see Dr. Berg is getting into the, the devils in the details. But I think the most dangerous thing that's hidden in your food is hexane. There's hexane residues in met there's also hexane residues in the kind bars now what's going on with hexane well hexane is a solvent and so these products i just mentioned involve soy protein isolates this is a very common protein that they put in bars veggie burgers plant-based products and they use this hexane to extract certain things from the soybean and so they bathe these soybeans in a petrochemical bath of this solvent, hexane, which is the byproduct of gasoline refining. There's a few companies that got sued because they advertised them as all natural. Cliff Bars was sued for this, and so was Kashi, who is owned by Kellogg's, because you can't have hexane in an all natural product, especially if something is certified 100% organic. But hexane is classified as a neurotoxin, 
by the CDC and as hazardous air pollution by the EPA. Of course, the soybean industry will argue that, oh yeah, hexane can get evaporated, blah, blah, blah. There's no regulatory body that's measuring how much hexane we're getting when we're eating these foods. They might think that they're getting this clean product, but they're not getting a clean product. And so how these manufacturing companies use this as an exemption is they classify them as a processing aid. Well, this is pretty disturbing, except I wonder how much it matters. Remember the theme that I like to teach is, you know, even something, if it's statistically significant, is it clinically significant? Is it, you know, really is the amount that it, effect that it has really important? If we go back to the, just the carbs themselves, I know some people get all bent out of shape because of the maltodextrin as a as a coating on the the grated cheese that's in a bag or the maltodextrin in a in a electrolyte product. One time at a Adapt Your Life meeting, my company we we were able to go around the country and had hundreds of people together on Saturday mornings. People took off Saturday mornings and came to to talk to us and I came up with the term carblet Carblet is an insignificant amount of carbohydrate. The, the, the less than 0.5 on, of total carbs on a label in the context of the entire diet is really pretty insignificant in, in terms of metabolism. Well, at least in my experience. So for those who want to reverse diabetes, reverse obesity, other metabolic problem, they can typically have just those little carblets you want a standard 20, 20 grams, which is which would be 20,000 milligrams. And here we're talking about 500 milligrams in that maltodextrin, that little pill Dr. Berg's talking about. So I don't know, I said, there might be just a little bit of fear mongering here, although it's all well and good to say, you know, until we're shown that it's absolutely safe or, or shown at a certain level that it's safe, we shouldn't be having this stuff and we shouldn't let companies be putting it into products that then get everywhere, our kids have it and, you know, so he's got a good point to be very careful about these things, but I'm wondering about the the magnitude of the problem here. And like I said before, it could be like an anti-caking agent, but it can also be a binder. And also a lot of the artificial sweeteners have in them hidden amounts of actual sugar and maltodextrin and dextrose, which is a synthetic sugar, but because they're smaller amounts, they don't have to list them. This is why it's probably good to actually get one of those blood sugar monitoring devices so you can test your blood sugar after consuming some of these products. Right, so that's testing the magnitude of the effect. So if you have a, a carblet in the maltodextrin and a grated cheese, and it doesn't raise your blood glucose, doesn't raise the insulin, you're gonna be able to lose weight and you're gonna be able to reverse your diabetes. Is it causing some other type of harm that you can't detect? Possibly. Like one that I would really want to test would be this one bar here. First of all, it says 20 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, but it has isomalto oligosaccharides. It's classified as a fiber, but it acts just like a sugar. The other thing you have to be careful about is when they say no added sugars, right? In your mind, you're going to feel better about it. Like, wow, good, there's no added sugars. But when you read the ingredients, you're going to see that there might not be added sugars, but the stuff in there definitely is filled with sugars. And you also have to be careful about anything that says sugar-free or sugar-free gum. But because the serving size is so small, they can use it to trick you. I'm also suspect of anything that says sugar-free when the carbs are high as well. Another trick that they use with maltodextrin is maltodextrin is classified as a carbohydrate, not as a sugar, even though it acts more like a sugar. And so they can get away with saying it's sugar-free. Again, if you check your blood, it'll just jack your blood sugar way the heck up there. Another ingredient I would be very careful about is corn syrup solids. Like, wait a second, corn syrup solids? Corn syrup solids is basically a solid form of corn syrup. So it's the same thing, but it's just in a solid form. So it's a synthetic type of sugar made out of corn. Besides gum, being in a small quantity, and they can kind of hide a lot of things in there. You also have the sugar-free non-dairy creamers you put in your coffee. I know when I'm out of town in a hotel, right, there's always this coffee machine, and 
They always have this, yeah, non-refrigerated, non-dairy creamer. Sometimes it says sugar-free. I will not use that in my coffee. Even though I need cream in my coffee, I will just drink it black because I don't trust those creamers. So I have a question for you. What's your thoughts on this 450 milligram capsule really being zero? So there's the idea that if it's under 0.5 on the label, total carbs under 0.5, they'll round it down to zero. So he's got a great point that that's really not nothing, but is it really enough for you to be worried about? It's interesting. If I'm traveling and there, or I'm at work and there are these creamers there, I'll have one or two. And, and, and yet, so you want to gauge the you know, strictness with which people have to be. Of course, I didn't come to this out of a long weight loss journey personally. Remember, two of my patients did this in front of me 20 some years ago. And I was curious about how it worked. And, and, and so I, I'm not coming to this with my own personal bias of how my body works. Like Dr. Berg says, you have to figure out how your body works and what you're relatively comfortable in making trade-offs. If he's out and about, doesn't know what's in there, he won't drink it. I think that's a reasonable thing to do. Great simple way to detect if something has hidden starches in it, like maltodextrin, corn starch, or food starch. Check this out. This test is to determine if there are carbohydrates in your supplements or even your food, okay? And primarily, I'm going to focus on maltodextrin, especially in flavors. Now, that works like this. All you need is some iodine. If you combine iodine with the starch, it turns the color blue. Now, if we take just normal water, okay, I'm just going to take water. We just take a drop or two of iodine in just regular water, tap water. You can see it doesn't turn blue. It stays kind of golden yellow. But if we take some iodine on some wonderful bread, you can see it will turn it blue. Okay, that's the chemical reaction. Now, if we take pure maltodextrin, for example, and put it in some water right here, okay, mix it up, put a couple drops of iodine in it, you can see the color blue or purple. Okay, that's pure maltodextrin. Now, let's take this other electrolyte powder, which is a competitor's brand, which has a very similar formula to mine, like a copycat formula. They state that this is without sugar or maltodextrin. Add a scoop of that and a couple drops of iodine. Let's see if it has maltodextrin in there. Woo! Turns purple blue. Apparently it does. All right, now let's take my electrolyte powder. Let's just see if it has any maltodextrin in there or, or carbs, starches, I mean. Okay, mix it here. Let's put a couple drops of iodine in there. No purple no maltodextrin. In fact, let's put some even more iodine in there, see if it eventually turns it purple. And the answer is no, it stays yellow gold. And you can detect hidden maltodextrin and other starches in your supplements and food. I love it. Basic chemistry. Gosh, if that's a safe thing to do in high school, the high school students should do this to look to see what's in their their foods. That's going back to chemistry that I need to relearn, and, and I hope to have a link down below by the time this video gets out, and so you can learn about that iodine reaction. I do remember Dr. Bernstein, who is someone who has type one diabetes, who teaches low carb diets. Richard K. Bernstein, he would use a a, a stick to check for, for sugar it, in, and using it inside his, the mouth and saliva breaking down bread would actually show sugar. And these little tips are really interesting. I'm still wondering if the amount of carbs in that product is significant, if it, but if you're worried about it, choose the one that doesn't have the extra carbs. Pretty easy answer if, if the cost is roughly the same. Very interesting. Another great video from Dr. Eric Berg. And if you like this, please like and subscribe, ring the notification bell, and look out for information on Wednesdays and Fridays. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell and check out AdapterLifeAcademy.com.